Okay, so we're going to find the equations of motion for an Atwood machine. Um, in this case, we're going to have a circular hoop acting as our pulley um, with two masses. mass of the pulley, M3, frictionless of course. Um, so for our Lagrangian, we need to know the kinetic energy and the potential energy. The kinetic energy um, will be the kinetic energy of these two masses as well as that of the pulley. So one half M now B, B squared, except we're going to, let's just say, um, we'll say this mass is going in this direction and this one is going in this direction. Um, and so the pulley is going to turn by an angle of theta. And the radius of the pulley is A. And so the velocity of these two um, masses uh, is going to be a theta dot. So that's squared in the kinetic energy um, plus uh, for the other mass. Okay, this is mass one. Mass two, a theta dot squared again plus the one half um, the moment of inertia of this hoop, which is m three a squared um, for for a wire for a, a hoop, um, and then the angular velocity of the hoop, which is theta dot um, squared, uh, angular velocity squared, and so this simplifies down nicely, one half the sum of the masses, m1 plus m2 plus m3, and then a theta dot for all of them, and that's squared. Now for the potential energy, um, if we uh, just set uh, some zero point um, along here, we'll have, you know, call this a uh, um, this level right here as the potential energy equals zero. Um, so we'll have uh, the potential energy is minus m1 times the distance of this uh, section of arc that the wheel turns, um, which is a theta, and that's times g, acceleration due to gravity. And the other one's going in the other direction, so it's a plus sign, m2, a theta, g. So our Lagrangian is one half M1 plus M2 plus M3, a theta dot squared, uh, the quantity squared, and then minus this uh, V, which is plus M1 a theta G minus M2 a theta G. So there's our Lagrangian. Lagrange equation, which is the time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. Theta is our one generalized coordinate for the system, minus the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta equals zero. So we'll start by finding partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. And 
this is the term where we have that. So we have, I'll just bring this a squared out front, and then we have our sum of masses. And theta dot. Okay, so, oops, theta dot. All right, there's that term. Now when we take the, um, the time derivative of this, we only have, so a is a constant, the masses are constant. Um, so all that will, well, let's just write it out here, d by dt of this, and all we get is another dot on the theta. All right, so now we'll find our partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to uh, theta. And so that um, we just get from this term here. Um, which is just, um, I'll put the a g out front, m1 minus m2. All right, so now we can find our equation of motion just by setting this equal to this. So a squared plus sum of masses m1 plus m2 plus m3, theta dot, not double dot actually, a, G, M1, minus M2. Okay, so one of these A's will divide out, and we have theta double dot equals G, M1, minus M2, over A times the sum of the masses. Just like that, there's our equation of motion.